Today I'm going to take a look at the recently released Maybox version 2002. For those of you that have never heard of Maybox, it's not a very well-known distribution. I think it's just like your typical garage distribution, a one-man job, but it's really nice. I've actually taken a look at Maybox a couple of times on the channel now. And Maybox is a Manjaro-based Linux distribution. It uses the Openbox window manager. I love Manjaro and I love Openbox, so it's the perfect distribution for me. Maybox is heavily inspired by the old CrunchBang Linux distribution. You guys remember CrunchBang? It died, I don't know, five, six years ago. CrunchBang was a very popular Debian-based Openbox distribution that has since passed away. CrunchBang now lives on as a couple of different forks. There's Bunsen Labs, there's also CrunchBang++, but the thing with those distributions is they're based on Debian. They're based on Debian stable. So old, crusty packages. Maybox is a CrunchBang-like experience, except being based on Manjaro, based on Arch, essentially. It is rolling release, very fresh packages. I love it. Let's take a look. So today I'm going to take a look at Maybox 2002 inside VirtualBox. So I'm just going to run through a quick VM installation and then just do a quick first look at Maybox 2002. Now when you get to the boot screen it is very much the Manjaro boot screen so it's asking about uh, your time, key table, language, driver, or do you just want to boot Maybox and that's what we want to do. So, And this will take a minute or two to boot up again. We're booting directly off the live ISO right now so boot up time will be a little slow until we actually get it installed. It looked like one of the things that was slowing down the boot up time was it was running a Pac-Man mirror script, at least that was the information it was giving me and some of the text flying by in the screen. So hopefully it sorted out the mirrors so we have the fastest mirrors available for us. All right, and of course in the live environment, the screen resolution here is a little small. I do notice we have a terminal emulator here in this dock at the top. So let me open up the terminal emulator. I'm going to do an xrander. I'm going to type X, R, and R in the terminal. I'm going to see what kind of screen resolutions are available. I'm going to choose this one. It's not exactly my resolution. I, I want 1920 by 1080, but they didn't have that available. 1680 by 1050, though, is a pretty good resolution for me capturing this recording. So I'm going to run xrander space dash s space 1680 by 1050. And I'm going to hit enter and resize the screen there. You see how that worked. And now I need to find the installer because I want to run through the installation of Maybox. I do notice the default language here is not English. So uh, it looks like uh, from some of the information I've seen in the documentation, the country of origin, is it Poland? So I'm going to take the opportunity now to, yeah, Polsky, yeah, Polish. I'm going to take the opportunity to change this to American English. All right, and then I'm just going to run through the installer. It looks like they're using the Calamaris installer. And time zone, I'm in the central time zone here in the U.S., so let me change that. English U.S. for the keyboard, but I noticed it's not English U.S. over here. I'm not sure why I have English U.S. here and then some foreign word. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but uh, none of the other English ones make sense. It's like Colmac and Macintosh, Dvorak. I don't want to change any of that. Keyboard model. Also notice that is not in English. Generic 105 key PC is probably right. Let me do a quick test. So this is a line. Let me do the special characters. Anything that looks kind of funny. Now all that looks good, I'm just going to go with it. Alright, and then the partitions, I'm going to erase the disk and let Maybox have the entire 20 gig virtual hard drive of this virtual machine. Then I'm going to click next. We need to create a username and a password. I'll call my user DT. We need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. And then repeat the password. And do we want to log in automatically without being asked for a password? No. The reason I create a strong and complicated password is so I have to use it for privacy reasons. Now, do we want to use the same password for the administrator account? Yeah. So that way, DT's password is the same as the sudo password. That way, I don't have to remember two different passwords. All right. And then we get the little review screen here. Location's good. Keyboard, I guess, is good. Partition scheme looks good. Let's install. Installed now. Now it's going to format the drive and write to the disk. I will be back as soon as the installation has completed. 
All right, the installation has completed. That took less than 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and tick on this checkbox right here that says restart now, and then click done, and the machine should reboot. All right, and we rebooted our freshly installed Maybox 2002. So let me log in with my password. All right, and the screen resolution is still rather strange. It's a rather strange default screen resolution. The square. Well, let me go ahead and pull up a terminal and run xrender again, and we will do the xrender s 1680 by 1050. All right. And by default here in Maybox, you get a welcome screen. And thankfully, everything is sort of in English, except the, I noticed the cocky in the background is still in, in Polish. That's not really going to do very much for me. The right click menu, so our open box menu, I, I notice most of that is also written in Polish. Again, it's not, this is, uh, <laughs> let's see if I can change this. Normally I would talk about the welcome screen, but I think that it's important that we actually go straight to the preferences and see if we can find some language settings. There is the Maybox Linux Control Center. Let me open that. Language packages and locale settings. Let's see what those are set to. So locale, English, yeah. English, US, that's right. Language packs, let's see. If I go to installed language packs, US English is here. It looks like, you know, all the locale and the keyboard and everything is set right. It's just, you know, this conky is rather useless and just unless you just happen to be Polish. Well, I think what I'll do is I'm just going to open up a terminal. Since the conky really doesn't do much for us, I'm just going to go ahead and kill all conky. Let's just get all that off the screen and then close the terminal. But I can go ahead and go through the applications menu. Under accessories, we have Clip It, which is a uh, like a clipboard manager. If I launch it, you see now in the sys tray here in our panel at the top, this is the tent two panel, by the way, you do have Clip It, and you see you can get into preferences and do some stuff with Clip It. Also, under accessories, we have our file manager, which looks like is key binded to super plus F. Let me try that out. So if I do super F, now, yep, that does work. I was about to say it may conflict with some of my key bindings on my host machine because the super key is the mod key for my window manager on my physical machine. So the mod key in the virtual machine here is also apparently the super key. So we may have some conflicting key bindings. So I'll probably do most of the stuff with the mouse today. Let's see what file manager this is using. PC Man FM, one of my favorite file managers. It's lightweight, minimal, but really it has all the features you need for a file manager. If I right click on the desktop and go to the accessories menu, we have F search. We have calculator, which is just a basic calculator. We have Cavantum Manager. We have Nitrogen. Nitrogen is our wallpaper utility. So let me launch Nitrogen so you can see it in action. If you guys have never seen Nitrogen, it's pretty much what I install on all of my systems. It's what actually sets the wallpaper on all of my machines. And there are some really nice wallpapers actually in this wallpaper pack. Some of them are standard, you know, Linux wallpaper packs. Some of them are Manjaro wallpapers. We have some really nice, uh, especially nature photographs here, like this one here, this sunset one. I like that one there with all the green. Yeah, that's not that bad either. Kind of fits with our style, our theme. Here's a nice little Manjaro wallpaper. Oh, here's one that's nice and dark. Yeah, I like that. That's classy right there. All right, go back to the applications menu, and if I go to... Accessories, we have Show Desktop, which is just hiding everything that happens to be open on your desktop. Nothing really to see there. Our Terminal Emulator. Now, I'm not exactly sure what Terminal Emulator they're using here. My guess is it's probably something like Termite. Let me launch Termite. It's not Termite. Is it URXVT? It's not URXVT. Surely this is an X term. No, what is this? Sakura? I'm running out of choices. LX Terminal. How about Cute Terminal? One last guess. Terminator. All right, so it is Terminator. <laughs> All right. 
it's kind of hard to, I guess I could have right clicked inside the terminal. Yeah, and then I would have got, yeah, preferences, and then that would have told me it's Terminator. I didn't think about that. I'm so used to using especially really minimal terminal emulators like Xterm and URXVTST, where right-clicking inside the terminal doesn't do anything. So without a menu system, you know, I was just guessing, just wild-ass guessing what the terminal emulator was. But Terminator is a fine terminal emulator. By the way, one interesting thing about this that I just noticed. You see this highlighting here? Wow, <laughs> I didn't realize there's a little, it's almost like a side menu, a wing panel that pops out. And what is it? It looks like it's just more conky, but it pops out <laughs> you know, when you roll over it. Now, this is interesting because it does have CPU and you know processes, uh, I guess disk, maybe IO, some network stuff. The processes, I guess, that are taking the most RAM. And that, that's kind of cool. I'll leave that. But now that I think about it, it can't be conky because I run that I ran that command kill all conky, so they must be using something else for this information here. I'm not exactly sure what program that is. Let me right click back on the desktop, and I think we've seen everything in accessories. Yeah, in graphics we have View Noir, which is just your image viewer, a standard lightweight image viewer. Uh, really nothing else under graphics, no GIMP or Inkscape or anything like that. Under internet we have Firefox, which makes sense, really. Pretty much every distro should just ship Firefox as the default browser, and most of them do. Also under internet we have our modem manager, broadband modem management tool. I've never seen something like that included in any distro. That is kind of interesting. Also, under internet, we have our web browser. Uh, again, I'm assuming that's just a, another link to Firefox. Let's launch it, since we didn't launch Firefox the first time we came across it. Yeah, and this is the latest Firefox. What are they on now? Version 74. I go to Help and About Firefox. Oh, this one is still on 73.0.1. I thought Firefox was already on 74. Close that. Of course, I could be wrong as far as the latest version of Firefox, or maybe I'm thinking of, you know, some of the nightly builds or something. 73, uh, being Manjaro and being just released in the last week or two, uh, that's probably the latest Firefox. Under Office, we don't really have any Office programs other than our PDF viewer. Under Programming, Genie is here. Genie is a fantastic plain text editor or IDE for those of you that want to use it for programming. I really like Genie, one of my favorite text editors. We have a sound and video category, and my favorite audio player of all time is installed by default. I, I, this is unusual because I, I don't see any distro really shipping Dead Beef by default, but I love Dead Beef. It is just so fantastic. I, I can't explain to you guys how much I love Dead Beef. I've done a video on Dead Beef, by the way. Look for it if you haven't seen it. Also under sound and video, we have MPV, Pulse Audio Volume Control, V4L2, you know, video for Linux, uh, Volume Icon, which I'm assuming is what is residing in our sys tray up here. We have System Tools, and that's just our file manager again, PC Man FM. Gparted is here. HTOP. Let's launch HTOP. 333 megs of the 4 gigs of RAM I gave this VM. That is very lightweight, and we've got some stuff running. I mean, I do have the clipboard uh, utility, clip it, still running. You know, there, there's some applets running, uh, but still, you know, 327 megs of RAM right now. So that's a very lightweight distribution. Let me close that. Let me go ahead and open the terminal again here. And since this is a rolling release, let's check on the latest kernel. <laughs> what are they running? I know on Arco, my Arco Linux distribution that I run on my host machine, Arch is basically already on Linux kernel 5.5. something another. This one is a little older, just slightly. They're on 5.4.23. So just a, a couple of weeks behind, but I'm sure I could do a sudo pacman syu, give it my super secure password, and no, nope, there's still nothing to do. Okay, that is interesting. Now, being based on Manjaro, Manjaro does hold packages back for about two weeks compared to mainline Arch. So it is a little slower rolling out some of these updates compared to most other Arch based distributions, but just a couple of weeks. And they do this really for stability reasons, just in case, you know, something breaks on Arch. They have two weeks to figure it out, the Manjaro guys. Let me right click on the desktop and I'm going to go to preferences. 
And, you know, some of the more interesting stuff with Maybox is their own tools, which include, of course, that Maybox Linux Control Center I showed you earlier. And this is where you can set, you know, some of the settings. You also get stuff like NeoFetch. Does that actually launch NeoFetch inside our terminal? It does. That is kind of cool. Uh, INXI, we could launch that. I'm assuming that runs inside the terminal. That's very nice. We also can uh, play with our auto start programs so we can tell Maybox exactly what programs we want to launch when we start up. We also can play with the look and feel. So this would be like our GTK theme and our tent two settings, which is tent two is the panel. Our open box theme, open box is the border around the windows and the right click menu. That is open box. I really like the open box theme and the green and black GTK theme. I, I wouldn't really mess with those. I might play with the tent two settings. Let me see if I can launch that. And it says, please wait, loading. All right. And then we have some themes. Uh, this is the default one. I guess that is already highlighted, but we could change it. So if I just click on it, does it change? I didn't really see anything change. Maybe I have to double click on it. Yeah, a double click and it says loading. Ah, and then we can edit, you know, the colors and, you know, the size and padding and everything else. I'm going to cancel that, but that's kind of cool. Let's see. I really like dark panels, really dark panels. They offer anything that's almost black. You know, I kind of like that one there. It says it's a vertical lift panel. Hit apply, but it really didn't change anything. So if that was supposed to change to a different theme and put it on the left hand uh, side of the screen, that really didn't do anything. So I'm not exactly sure how this works. I normally don't use tools like this. I use Tint2 for all my open box installs, but I just manually edit the theme, you know, in a text editor. I usually don't play with these fancy GUI tools, but I, I'm kind of disappointed that they don't just work. You know, I hit apply, hit OK, and nothing really changes. Oh no. Maybe if I logged out. It's hard to tell what log out is because this menu, I, yeah, I would have to completely rewrite this menu too if I used Maybox. I don't know. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> I'm just going to pull up a terminal. Since I can't read the menu, I'm just going to kill all open box just to get out of the window manager. Uh, apparently, I hit the hot key to. All right. All right. Let's log back in. All right. And the panel theme still didn't change. Uh, resolution went back to that small resolution. Nothing is in English. Uh, but we've seen most of the tools here. Anyway, I don't want to take up too much of your time here. This really was just a very quick installation and first look at Maybox. For those of you that like Manjaro and Manjaro Base and like OpenBox, I will say Maybox, even though it's a little rough around the edges, especially, you know, I was struggling because of the, the language settings and it didn't look like the Tint2 to, uh, tool really changed the panel at all. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't using it properly. But if you like a configured open box desktop, I will say it is hard to get a better looking open box desktop. If I open their file manager here. I mean, just that theme looks beautiful. I love the icon set. I like the open box theme, uh, the icons inside your open box menu. I like the conkeys they included. I like the little, you know, side panels here that, you know, it's not something I personally would put on my desktop, but I don't hate that they included it. Oh, we got this. I didn't even notice this little side panel up here. I saw the arrows up here. So we do have two other side panels. This is basically almost like a nerd tree. Those of you that have used Vim, it's like a little file manager here, you know, inside that wing panel. And this wing panel over here, it's like your system settings, your preferences. I guess it's a quick way to access your preferences, screenshot tools, things like that. Edit your keyboard shortcuts. Wow. Yeah, that's not bad. I will say that I, I sometimes see these, especially small Linux distributions that are created by a very small team, often just one person. And I often wonder what the point of their distribution is. I never worry about that or wonder about that with Maybox because this guy is doing something really, really unique with Maybox. If you never really tried OpenBox, if OpenBox seems kind of scary as far as installing it and configuring it, Maybe consider Maybox 2002. Now, before I go, 
This episode was produced by Michael Mitchell, Chris, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Lambda, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys are the producers of the show. Without these guys, this episode about Maybox 2002 wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all these other names you're seeing on the screen right now. This is all my supporters over on Patreon. Without these guys, this channel wouldn't be possible. You'd like to support the channel. Consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace.